Today on the Point Blank Performance YouTube channel, we're showing you a product we make in-house that is $100 that can avoid you spending thousands of dollars on your 68 RFE transmission. This product fits the 13 to 18 Dodges only. Keep in mind, 13 to 18 year model Dodges. Guys, we're talking about our Ram Thermal Bypasses. If you went on the website, if you purchased it, we want to say thank you. If you haven't, jump on the site, pointblankperformance.com, hit the Shop Now tab. We've got tons of billet parts coming out, but today's focus point is a thermal bypass. First off, what's it do? How do we install it? Let's get down to business. First, let's verify that you're going to be working on a 68 RFE transmission. This is the transmission pan. This is the transmission. We're on the passenger side of the truck. You can look through the fender well. There will be a block of aluminum here. This connects the lines. These hold transmission fluid in them. What color is it? It's red. You can see it's bright, it's pretty, it's red. It doesn't have any crazy smell to it. If you pull this off and it looks brown, it looks dingy, and you're looking at it and you're second guessing of how it looks, I want you to stop there and I want you to call your local transmission shop, whoever you trust, and say, hey, I just want you to check out my transmission. You may catch something before it fails. Now, let's continue further. First off, we're gonna identify we have two O-rings on these hard lines. There's an O-ring here, there's an O-ring here. Where can you get these O-rings if you don't have them? The OEM dealership only. Those are the only place to get these O-rings that are approved to go on these hard lines. Once you have those, once you identify the fluid's good, now we're ready to tell you why we have a bucket underneath us. Because you're gonna be experiencing this the entire time you do the install. This is something, let me put this cat back on here. This is something we do not want you guys to rush. Don't be in a rush during the entire thing. Have plenty of time, have a bucket, have something to lay down on and get comfortable. Once you verify these O-rings are here, now we're ready to go to the table put our O-rings in our bypass and install it. Let's go to the table. When you unbox your thermal bypass, you will have a thermal bypass, you will have two O-rings, you will have two C-clips. This is all the parts that comes with your thermal bypass. Now we need to put the O-rings in the bypass. Let's show you guys how to do that. So now we've flipped our thermal bypass up. We need these holes facing towards us. Verify, look, I want you to see where the O-rings go. They go right below the surface. This is the ring groove that the O-ring will sit into. We don't send these out with O-rings in them because of this. We want you to lubricate them. We want you to put them in. That way you acknowledge that they have to be lubed when they go on so you do not rip or tear an O-ring when installing. Now let's grab this guy. First thing I'm gonna do, just drop her in there. Now we're gonna use our fork that has a smooth nose to it and work this o-ring in there nice and easy now we verified that we have our first o-ring in and it's set and secure we're going to pick up our second o-ring and we're going to put it in so all i do is simply place it in there and i'm going to use my pick i'm going to gently work it in there you don't need to get in a rush it may take a couple minutes to put it in there i'm going to use the spoon edge of it to push it in Think of it as you're gonna go six o'clock, 12 o'clock, and then you're gonna work around to nine o'clock. And then what do we got from nine o'clock? We got three o'clock. So once I get it in there, and I can use my finger to barely press it in there. I'm gonna come back around to six o'clock, put it in there. And once it's in, I'm gonna work my sides one more time. Not getting in a hurry, not trying to puncture the O-ring. If you puncture the O-ring, it's gonna leak. So I'm gonna gently push it in there one more time. Once I'm past where it needs to go, then I can take the spoon and I can pick it up to the O-ring. Just like that, it's in. Take your time with it. Once it's seated in there, you should be able to take this, run it around. It's smooth, it's good, you verified it's looked at it. Now it's time to lubricate it and put it on the truck. So now we're back to the truck. We're gonna grab our 13 millimeter socket and our ratchet. We're gonna back the bolt off right here that attaches the trans lines to the transmission brace. So, back that bolt off, you're gonna see it. Back it all the way out of there. This is gonna help us put the thermal bypass on. More importantly, it's gonna make it easier to see for you guys these barbs engaging into our product. So now, let's grab the thermal bypass, 
push them together. So guys, remember us saying we wanted you to install your O-rings into your thermal bypass. We also want for you to make for sure that you lubricate these O-rings before you put it on these barbs. I use silicone. If you don't have silicone, that's fine. Use the transmission fluid. As long as it's clean, everything's good. So we're gonna squirt these down here, put our silicone to the side, put our hands on the back side of the barb. We wanna line up the bottom and the top, and all you gotta do is barely work them in there. Once you work them, and I'm twisting my left hand, left to right, that way they go on nice and easy, and you're gonna feel it. Push onto the O-ring and seat. Top one seated. Now, we've gotta grab our C-clips and make for sure that this bypass will not come loose from those lines. So now we're gonna verify that our barb that's attached on the trans line is actually inseated all the way in the thermal bypass. Simply look at your slot here, make for sure that you can take a pick and there's nothing grabbing it. If there is any of the barb sticking out, when you put this C-clip on, well, it won't go on. Number two, this line will blow out. All the trans fluid's gonna go on the ground. You're gonna have a transmission failure. Now, grab your C-clip and let's insert it into the slots. There it goes. So guys, we just showed you, if you do not have that C-clip in those slots, then it will come off there. We just put it back in, you can hear it. It's grabbing on that barb, so that way it locks on. If your transmission lines expand or anything, now it can't come unseated on there. Make for sure, test it, check it twice before sending it down the road. Now let's put our C-clip in the top one. So now guys, grab your second C-clip, locate where you're gonna put it, right here in those slots. We're gonna put it right there on the top of the smooth machine surface. We're gonna put our thumb right in the middle, and we're gonna push. Then seat it in the second one. Now, verify that the barb will not come out. Grab the hose and give it a big pull. Once you give it a pull, you're good to go. All you need to do now is put these plastic retainers over the C-clip, that way they don't come out. So just simply grab them, as you can see, Press over the top. When you hear the audible sound, that means she is secure. Press it here. Give it a good pull. Come on. And we're secure. So now we're gonna attach our hard lines to our thermal bypass. We're gonna remove our plug. More importantly, we're just gonna let it go. We've got our bucket underneath it. Bring your thermal bypass up. Let's work on our first top line first. The O-ring's in there, we can fill it. Now let's attach the bottom. Gonna barely pull it down here, get our bottom line attached just right, and everything lines up. Simply screw this line in, the bottom, or the top more importantly, and we're gonna work on the bottom. Got our bottom one threaded in there, our top one, to make it easier, guys, you wanna work on your top hard line first. Once it's seated in there, you can see you got a lot of slack in it. Go ahead and just thread it on there. Get it hand tight, so as tight as you can get it by hand, so that way you can get this leak in the stop because you're gonna be making a mess. So it's tight. Take a towel, I'm wiping it. Now let's work on the bottom one. The bottom one will go right in because the top one's what aligns it. So the bottom one's going in, and I'm wiggling this thing left to right, so that way it helps my threads engage. Keep tightening up, keep tightening up. Now we're ready to torque them down. So now guys, you're gonna pick up your adjustable open end wrench. We wanna tighten up these lines to get the leak to stop, so that way you can clean up the mess. But keep in mind, don't crank down on them because your bolt is still out of this bracket. So if you go to crank down, you're gonna flex, you're gonna bend those lines. We don't wanna do that. At this point, Let's size up our adjustable wrench and let's give them a little torque. Then we're gonna put the bolt in. Got our top one tight. That way we can get our leak to stop. Our bottom one, we're just gonna sit here and just tighten it until it gets snug. It's gonna take a minute. So now we're gonna take our bolt that came out of this bracket. We're gonna push it over, line it up, and we're gonna put it in there. Now this is where you're gonna take your 13 millimeter wrench, 13 millimeter socket, and tighten it up. So it's in there. We're gonna take this guy. Let's 
give it a couple turns. When she's good and tight, all right. Now she's torqued down. Now we can lay on these lines a little bit harder and tighten them up. Now let's grab our adjustable opening wrench. I'm gonna put my hand behind these lines. Why? Because when I crank down on it, I don't wanna flex these lines. Put it on the nut, make sure it's good and tight. Give it a couple cranks. You can see there, I got a half a turn out of it. Now I wanna brace it and I wanna give it a good hard turn. These are aluminum, so you don't have to get crazy. You just want them tight. So that one's tight. Good, now I'm ready to go to the next one. Let me get it here where you guys can see it. I'm gonna put my hand behind it, I'm gonna crank it. And I'm gonna crank it one more time. Now I'm gonna flip it, I'm gonna go to the top. That way I can get on it. I'm gonna put my hand behind the bypass, that way I'm not trying to flex the lines. And I'm gonna crank down on it. And I feel good about it. I've got two threads sticking out, almost one. Most importantly, guys, you want to recheck how tight these are after you let the truck warm up, set, don't drive it, recheck these, make for sure that they are good and tight, and then we're ready to drive the truck. So these are all the procedures for you guys, the do-it-yourselfer, to install our 13 to 18 Ram Thermal Bypass. Couple key notes here. You lost transmission fluid when doing this procedure, didn't you? Yes. How much? Guys, that's on you. We need you to visualize it and to see how much before you start your truck, add transmission fluid to it. Next thing, your truck takes a specific type of trans fluid, pull out the dipstick, look on it because I want you to verify what you're putting in your transmission. Again, pull the dipstick out. What does it say on the end of it? Put that in your transmission. How much? How much did your truck lose? Guys, we wanna make this procedure super easy, but again, you're dealing with your transmission. There is no shame in this. We all start somewhere. If you are timid of this, guys, just take it to a local shop. They can hit us up. Hey, it's Tyson at Point Blank. What's your issue? All right, cool, man. I'm gonna throw you a YouTube link. Check it out on there. Awesome, man. I feel confident. Cool, job well done. Guys, if you have any questions, anything we didn't cover about our install today, make for sure you comment below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you again for purchasing a PVP product. See you back here next week at Point Blank Performance.